Hello, konnichiwa, konbanwa. Good afternoon to all of you guys at the Fukuoka International School in Japan. Thank you so much for sending me your questions about a life of adventure. I've got them up on the screen here. I'll do my best to answer them. You cycled the length of Japan. What did you like most about Japan? One thing I loved about Japan was that it was not Siberia. <laughs> and I have nothing against Siberia, except I just spent three months there in the middle of winter and it was really, really, really remote, cold and hard. And to suddenly arrive in Japan, which had shops and um, warm, clean public toilets and, uh, and roads cleared of ice was just heaven, really. So I really enjoyed the relief of that. Um, I loved a lot of things about Japan. I loved the nice hot baths, the very kind, welcoming people. Some of the kindest people I've met um, in the world. Um, some of the food I enjoyed, some of it was disgusting. And the problem with Japan, for me as a foreigner, a gaijin, is you can't really tell when you look at a bit of food if it's going to be warm or cold, sweet or savoury, delicious or disgusting. So it's a bit of an adventure putting anything in your mouth in Japan and the good stuff was delicious. So I enjoyed that. I really enjoyed the scenery, the landscapes, the history, the culture. But I think what I liked most about Japan was that it felt very foreign. And these days, a lot of countries I go to feel quite similar. So if I fly to Paris or to New York or Sydney, I'll walk out of the airport and I'll immediately see shops that I recognise and kind cafes I recognise and food I recognise and, and um, alphabets that I recognise. And Japan, despite being a, a very wealthy country, felt very, very, very foreign and different to home, to England. And I, I really enjoyed that foreignness side of Japan. Oh, and I loved going to the sumo. <laughs> uh, that was brilliant. You met many kind people. What's the kindest thing anyone's done for you on a trip? People are so kind on expeditions. In um, crossing the empty quarter desert, some uh, Bangladeshi um, road workers brought us watermelon, brought us ice cream out to the desert. A, um, a family in the middle of nowhere in Alaska who'd driven for miles and miles and miles to get pizza, stopped their car and gave me a pizza, which is a, ra a random act of kindness, small but made me cry, just, wow, these people are care. And that's a big thing when you're on your own. Um, so many families have invited me to stay or given me food. Everywhere in the world, people give you water and give you smiles for free. So it's a, it's a very um, positive experience, generally, traveling in the world. Um, you are a successful writer. Ah, arigato. Um, what advice do you have on writing well? The best advice I have to write well is to read a lot. Read, 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 read. Spend years reading good books and after that something of what makes writing well will sink into your head. But the simple thing I'll say to you today is read a lot and write a lot and gradually over time you'll get good. In our unit we've been learning about Livingston's exploration of Africa You've also crossed Africa. Uh, I was a bit quicker than Livingston <laughs> and not quite as tough. What were some of your favorite memories of Africa? Oh gosh, Whew. Africa was my first big adventure and I think your first big adventure stays with you forever. So I remember big blue skies, crazy red sunsets, the sun setting much faster than I was used to at home, uh, the smell of dust, the red dust tracks, um, endless laughter and music and dancing and just a sense of fun to to the people. Um, it's quite hard to generalize a whole continent, but that's what I would think of. And I think of just the the different landscapes, the rocky, rocky outcrops, the small scrubby um, spiky acacia trees, camping under those and the sounds of cicadas at night. And of course, seeing different stars to the ones we get in, uh, in the Northern Hemisphere, the Southern Cross. Um, man, I need to go back to Africa. <sighs> on your adventures, you experience times of great self-doubt. How do you find the inner strength to keep on going when all you want to do is quit? 
Well, Japan is the land of inner strength. Gosh, <laughs> that's for sure. Um, what stops me quitting is knowing that I'll regret it in the long run and that although these things are hard, giving up going home and watching TV might seem very nice, but I'd regret that at some point. And it's worth struggling and pushing on and doing the hard stuff. Over the years, I've realized that the things we work hard for, the things that take a lot of effort, they are the things that we become the proudest of later in life and make us the happiest. So, so that's a good reason for it. I'm also very stubborn and quite like suffering and misery. So that, that helps with long expeditions too. Um, what technology can't you be without on expeditions? When I cycled around the world, it was very low tech. I took a very simple digital camera and I took a notebook and a pen, a diary to, to write every day. Um, so I'd say the technology I can't be without on a trip is paper and pen so that I can write every day. That would be the most important thing for me. Second choice would be a camera. And phone cameras these days are incredibly good. The problem with phones is you then have all the other distractions of emails and Facebook and Instagram and all these distractions that can take you away from the experience of just enjoying the adventure. So my dream journey, I think, would be pen, paper, and a camera, and an old-fashioned paper map and an old-fashioned compass, which, of course, once upon a time were wonderful high technologies for explorers. Uh, so that would be my choice. If you could go on an expedition with any explorer, because you've been, you've been inspired by many, who do you choose and why? I would go to the South Pole with Captain Scott. Captain Scott died on the way to the South Pole. Five very, very good men, very good people. And I would go with them and I would say to Captain Scott, listen, it is so much better for you to turn around now, to go back home to your friends, to your families, to your loved ones and to live life than it is to carry on stubbornly and stupidly to what you know will will lead to your death just because you're too stubborn and proud to turn around and I think being brave enough to admit that you're scared and you've made a mistake is one of the hardest things for anyone on adventures so I'd love to go with him I'd also love 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 to have been in the spaceship with Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin as they landed on the moon 50 years ago. Wow, that is the greatest adventure anyone has ever done, I think. And I'd also love to cross Australia by camel with Robin Davidson. She is an amazing writer and a fantastic adventurer, and I've never done a big expedition in Australia. Thank you very much for your questions. Good luck with all of your work, dreaming of adventure. I hope you get out and explore not only the world, but also the countryside and the wild places around Fukuoka. Arigato gozaimasu. Thank you very much for having me. Goodbye. Sayonara.